I work at a hotel, and guests and even coworkers, mostly coworkers, will live lives of immorality and, and drink excessively and, and go to parties and hang out with bad company and, and, and they'll gamble and fornicate and, and, curse, and curse excessively throughout the day. Uh, and I remember the first day going there and, and being employed there, you know, they noticed something different about me right away. Oh, Cody doesn't drink. Cody doesn't go out and party. Cody doesn't curse. And they asked me, Cody, why don't you do these things? Why don't you drink? Why don't you hang out with us? And, and I would give a reason. I, I'd, I'd say, well, you know, drinking's not good for you. And, well, cursing, you know, that's just a sign of that you don't have self-control. And, and I'd give reasons like that. But I realized that reasons like that are, are not necessarily all the best reasons we can give when we say why we don't do, the, do those certain things. In 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15, it says, But sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts, always being ready to make a defense to everyone who asks you to give an account for the hope that is in you, that is in you, yet with gentleness and reverence. When it says make a defense, that's not, oh, just give a reason that comes to your head. Oh, just tell them what, what, what's on your mind. Uh, I just thought of how there's so many examples in the Bible and in the Old Testament of how all the prophets, when they went to the Israelites, went to the people, did, did they just go and say, hey, I, I don't think you're doing right. I don't, I don't think, you know, what, what you're doing is on the right path. No, they said the word of God, the Lord has told me to tell you that you're doing wrong and you need to repent. And so in a similar way, when we go and explain our behavior and explain why we do the things we do, we need to use the Bible. You know, we can't just go to people and say, well, this is why I don't drink, because it's bad for you. No. And so, so they'll say, well, Cody, why? so I started using the Bible more often. And they say, well, Cody, why, why don't you drink? And I say, well, Ephesians 5.18, do not be uh, drunk with wine but be filled with the Spirit. And they say, why don't you go to parties? Why don't you hang out with us and go to this party that I'm hosting? And I'd say, well, 1 Corinthians 15.33, bad, don't not be deceived. Bad company corrupts good morals. And they'd say, and even one guy who is a very immature person, they say, well, Cody, why don't you look at these girls in the way that I do? Why don't you look at them and lust after them? And I'd say, Philippians 4, verse 8, Whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, dwell on those things. And it's astonishing the response you get from people from like that. You, you'll get people to say, oh, wait, Cody knows the Bible. And it'll spark up a lot of conversation. One of the chefs I work with, always have a conversation with him about the Bible because we'll always have discussions on, well, is this right? Is this, a, is this a authority that God has given us? And, and different things. And it'll, they'll, they'll know that you know the Bible, and they'll ask you questions. They'll say, well, Cody, what does the Bible say about this? What, what about this? And so now you may be asking, well, why is it really, why do we need to make a defense? Why do we always need to be ready to make a defense? Because what if someone comes to you and asks you, what, what do I need to be saved? What did Jesus do for me? What is salvation? Are you just going to go to them and say, oh, well, you know, Jesus came to the earth to die and w uh, was hang hung on the cross for the remission of our sins uh, so that we can have the hope of eternal life with God in heaven. Nothing wrong with what I said there, but how much better would it be? How much more powerful is it to say, well, let's go to Matthew chapter 28. Let's, let's read. What did Jesus do there? Here we read, here we're reading how, oh, Jesus was so distressed that he was sweating drops of blood. Jesus was scourged, was beaten almost to death, and then he had to carry his cross all the way up a mountain, and then he had to be hung and nailed to a cross through his hands and feet. This is what Jesus did for you, because we both are sinners. How much greater is that, to actually have to show them and go through with them what the scripture says? And, and that's how we can bring people to Christ, for faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Not 
hearing by Cody Baker. Faith doesn't come by hearing Josh Creel. Faith doesn't come by hearing Bob Harkrider. It comes by hearing the Word of God. And that's what we've got to show people, is the Word of God. So, to extend an invitation, we see also in, in 1 Peter 3.15 how it says, to make a defense to everyone who asks you to give an account for the hope that is in you. For us Christians, we have the hope of eternal life with God in heaven. But if you're not a Christian, you don't have that hope. And you can't make a defense for that hope. You can't make a defense to try and bring people to Christ. But you can do that tonight. You can repent and be baptized for the remission of your sins, confess his name, and you can start making a defense for the hope that you'll have in you. You can do that now. And maybe you're a Christian already. Maybe you've fallen away, though, and maybe you're, you don't know how to make a defense. Maybe you're not as knowledgeable in the Bible. You know, we have a congregation here filled with people that will help you with that. If there's anything that you need, please come forward as we stand and as we sing.